Terry Van Oy. Welcome into today's lesson. We're going to be talking about using trig identities. Now here is the series of videos. Uh, this is what we're going to cover as we talk about trig identities. Uh, in this video I'm going to talk about the basics and basically where these things come from. And there's different types of identities. In this video I'll talk about reciprocal identities, tangent identities, and the Pythagorean identities, which are probably the ones you'll see most common. Then we're going to talk about how you use it and why you use different definitions of trigonometric functions. You can use it to rewrite expressions or solve equations. And then I'm going to give you some problem sets to try and a self quiz at the end. So thanks for watching and let's get started. Basics of the trig identities start with the definition of the ratios themselves. Hopefully you've seen this before. This shouldn't be new, but the sign is the opposite leg over the hypotenuse. Now first of all, let's label these. A hypotenuse we're going to call H and the opposite leg is O and of course adjacent is A. Alright, now that all is from the um, reference angle theta which we'll call right there. Alright, so from that angle we have the hypotenuse, the opposite leg, and the adjacent leg. All right, so the sine is the opposite leg divided by the hypotenuse. The cosine is the adjacent leg divided by the hypotenuse. The tangent is the opposite leg over the adjacent leg. So we're going to take that relationship now and look at the unit circle. The unit circle is one that has a radius of one unit. All right, so if we start here, that's going to be one unit, one foot, one centimeter, one mile, whatever it may be. And every time we open up this angle, it is going to be one unit long. All right, that's why we call it the unit circle. Now, that's a special kind of uh, situation because then these right triangles that are formed can simplify this whole trig function idea for us. So let's take this triangle here. Let's say that we go out here all the way and that is one unit and we drop a perpendicular straight down and we come across this way and so we have a right triangle all right with the hypotenuse being one unit from the unit circle now our hypotenuse is one unit long and that means that this is going to be one this is going to be one and um, that gives us the sign is the opposite leg over one. Okay, in other words, it's the opposite leg. So let's think of it in the unit circle now. The opposite leg is the sine value. All right. In the cosine relationship, it's adjacent over one. In other words, this adjacent leg represents the cosine. All right. Let me write it in right here. So in the unit circle, the vertical leg here, the opposite leg, is the sine value and the horizontal uh, component there is the cosine value. All right, so very simply, that's all we need to remember. This is one in the hypotenuse, this is sine, and this is cosine. That gives us a right triangle with a hypotenuse of one and this leg is sine and that leg is cosine. Now it's a right triangle, so now we can use our friend Pythagoras to write our first identity. Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. And if you remember about in geometry, learning the Pythagorean theorem, that comes from the right triangle relationship there. Now, it's not always in that format though. Sometimes we're gonna move things around and manipulate this a little bit. So for example, let's subtract cosine squared theta from each side. Sine squared theta equals one minus cosine squared theta. Sometimes that's the substitution or the identity we could use in an expression. What about we take this original and subtract sine theta, a sine squared theta from each side. Now we have cosine squared theta equals one minus sine squared theta. Now those are all three versions of the same Pythagorean identity when it comes to trig functions on the unit circle. All right, I'm going to leave that there and we'll refer back to it in a lot of other coming up videos. All right, let's do some reciprocal identities. These reciprocal identities are writing one function as a reciprocal of another. 
And these are the main three uh, trig functions, sine, cosine, and tangent. But there's other three here, and the sine is the, actually the reciprocal of what's called the cosecant, and it's CSC, okay? Not very common, but it is part of the trig uh, group of six. The cosine function is actually a reciprocal of the secant function, all right? SEC, secant. And the tangent is a reciprocal of the cotangent function, COT. And I'm sure you've seen those before. Likewise, the cosecant function is the reciprocal of the sine function. The secant function is a reciprocal of the cosine function. And the cotangent function is a reciprocal of the tangent function. And there we go. Those are called the reciprocal identities. And those will come in very handy as we work on some expressions and equations. Now finally, the tangent identities have to do with how we can rewrite the tangent function. Now, this is the identity of what a tangent is. It actually is the sine ratio, a ratio of the sine over the cosine. All right, basically the definition of what a tangent is. All right, if you want to uh, rewrite the cotangent function, then that's actually the reciprocal of that. So that's the cosine divided by the sine. All right, again, sort of a definition. And those together are called the tangent identities. So there will be times when you use these tangent identities to rewrite expressions. Sometimes you'll use the reciprocal identities. In fact, I would say most of the time you'll need to be aware of those. And of course, also extremely important are these three versions of the first Pythagorean identity. Now stick with me in the next video. I'm going to show you two other versions of these Pythagorean identities that can come in very handy. All right, thanks for watching.